Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, jumping on to another question of uh, Australian written dental council exam. Uh, this is a good question. It's on a medical related complication and uh, for sure one of such questions related to blood thinners is going to be asked in your exam. So it's very important for you all to read the therapeutic guidelines. It's mentioned very clearly. Open any textbook uh, which is related to medical complications in dentistry and uh, read about all the hematological disorders and which medicine is taken and uh, remember uh, the mechanism of working uh, in brief not in detail about uh, the calcium channel blockers which are usually given in hypertension warfarin again which is given in hypertension and some other things uh, including myocardial infarction and uh, antiplatelet uh, inhibitors like clopidogrel etc just remember their names to a certain extent their brand names which are used in australia because sometimes in the exam they'll give you the brand name the, but the most popular brand name of the drug uh, and you would be expected to know the content of it uh, so yeah, it may sound like a little tough task, but uh, once you write it down on a pen and paper, put it on your dashboard, wake up every morning and have a look at it, it would be easy. Certain things should always be on your dashboard and that is the fluoride uh, dosage and for which situation which fluoride supplement to give, varnish, gel, mouthwash, whatever. Then eruption chart, the perio staging and grading chart and this hematological chart so uh, for all my enrolled candidates i have given them in charts and guidelines folder certain charts just please write it down in your own handwriting yeah don't print i want you to write because when you write it in your own handwriting the brain remembers it better make it colorful use different colors make it fun you know i used to do the same when i was studying for my exams any exams i had a small dashboard in my study uh, table area and i used to write for it keep replacing it there were times i remember when i was studying for the aipg exam uh, I, because i had a small dashboard i started making use of the wall i used to tape it up you know so at one point my room was like full of charts of different uh, stuff so anyways this is happens when you're a student embrace this period so uh, yeah let's start a 50 year old patient uh, presents to your clinic for an extraction of a badly broken down lower molar okay so it's decided she's come for extraction she owns a cafe and does not have time for lengthy treatments basically she's a busy lady she has been on war warfarin for 10 years it's a long time for deep vein thrombosis she looks anxious due to her work commitment. So she's very anxious that whatever treatment is done should be done as soon as possible. She's in a hurry because she wants to go back to her cafe and she runs it. And she's also taking warfarin. Now, usually whenever a patient is taking some form of medication, you should always know the detailed medical history. You should not just jump in and believe whatever the patient says. Because while taking the history, you may come across some loopholes or you may realize if the patient has been consistent about the medication or not because that would decide your course of treatment see in such patients whenever they come for a dental uh, procedure and when they have a medical condition always the overall health of the person is more important than your dental procedure you understand saving that tooth or doing a very good extraction is very very short term thing compared to the long term consequences that it would have it would have on the health of the patient right so first you will determine if the overall health permits you to do the dental procedure or not because dental procedures can be delayed but any complications to the health can be detrimental okay so uh yeah this is a tooth and the question mentions it's badly broken down and she wants an extraction now the most important factor to be considered before commencing the extraction is again the keyword most because when this keyword comes, it means all the options that would be given would be correct. You have to pick up the most important one. Understood? That's the keyword. Don't skip that word. These adjectives are your guidelines to choose the, in choosing the right option. 
whoever tends to miss th these keywords will definitely make a mistake so the most important factor to be considered before commencing extraction is administering antibiotics mm -hmm. seize warfarin 24 hours before the procedure i don't know what happens in the country that you practice but in australia and otherwise also that i have learned we as dental practitioners are not supposed to ask the patient to discontinue any form of systemic medications that they are taking which is prescribed by their own general practitioners or specialist you always 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 will consult the specialist or you will ask the patient give them a referral note and ask them to go back to their specialist or gp asking for a clearance for the procedure that you are about to do you will yourself never ask them to discontinue anything okay check pulse and blood pressure that can be done routinely but it's not a most important factor take a detailed medical history consult an oral surgeon well this looks like a tooth which you can extract so it's not like an impacted tooth where you have to consult an oral surgeon though not a bad option but it's not the most important factor the most important factor before i touch the patient is that i should be aware of the entire medical history and i am supposed to be prepared about the consequences that might happen in a patient who's taken ward for it so for me the option d becomes the answer of choice and i'm sure you as a clinician when you practice in the clinic you also ask in detail since when are you having this condition how it happened what is the dose giving uh, is it under control after the dose has been given like for example i get many children with epilepsy right and they are like say five year old six year old so uh, whenever the patient mentions that uh, my child has a history of epilepsy so i immediately i'm like sitting next to the parent and i put on a cartoon for the child to watch and i'm like just relax and then i start talking about it uh, very gently and politely that please tell me the history of epilepsy when did it start was it febrile was it just started like that how many seizures what was the frequency when did you visit the doctor and what is the medication which is going on did you need to increase or decrease the dose in between how often you go to your uh, pediatric uh, pediatrician or the pediatric neurosurgeon whoever is uh, treating you and uh, did any seizure occur after the medication started any side effects that you observed in the child or any changes in the behavior once the medicine was started and uh, what kind of seizures come how does the child behave what do you, you do when the seizure episode happens you know when i have all this detailed history then i make a call whether i would be treating the patient on the chair or do i want a clearance from the pediatrician or it's best to treat the patient under general anesthesia so uh, all these things you need to be aware of you understand so uh, a detailed medical history is very very important blood test for inr should be undertaken see it it is amazing i i know this question ha had a lot of confusion amongst a lot of candidates because one of the options here is immediately before the surgery so they were all like why not this the question is asking you when it should be taken according to the guidelines they have not mentioned the word according to guidelines but whenever we say what treatment needs to be done it's always by default understood according to the prescribed guidelines by some international standards immediately is the best but is that the guideline no the guideline is within 24 hours before surgery okay if immediately was the guideline then we would have chosen that you understand yeah it's good to have an immediate test done but that is not the guideline so i'm going to choose the option within 24 hours before the surgery because that is the guideline and i have to answer the questions according to guidelines because if we don't follow guidelines then everything would be haphazard it's as good as saying the tooth is having irreversible pulpitis it's middle of the night when is the best time to commence the treatment right now no <laughs> it's not possible you understand the guideline is different for that right so you have to follow the guidelines if the inr is between 2 2 to 3.5 what are you going to do see the ideal inr what is inr it is interna internationalized normal ratio uh, it it detects the clotting value uh, how much uh, it's a ratio ba basically of the let me search let me give you the exact thing instead of 
How is iron are calculated?